All right, guys. We're not doing no book this time, not flipping through anything. You already know by the title that we're doing a remake of the first episode. The way that one was shot was absolutely f***ing terrible. So, um, just grab that shot, throw it back. Let's get this started. All right. Before I can dive into what the Zimmerman telegram is or what it caused, we need some context first because, because you know, you know, there's a lot, a lot going on at the time. At the point the telegram was intercepted, it was January 1917. By the start of the year, Europe had been embroiled in the Great World War for almost three years. After the German advances had been blunted, eventually, trench warfare dominated the landscape from 1915 to 1917. The Battle of the Somme had seen the introduction of tanks to the battlefield and chlorine gas had been used, in violation of the Hague Convention, by the Germans in the Second Battle of Ypres. 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 Now, now don't get it twisted. It wasn't just the Germans using chemical weapons during that war. The Allies are guilty of that too. At this point, the war was a stalemate, with minimal gains being made on either front. The Russians at the threshold of a revolution, were beginning to waver. Because their Tsar listened to a crazy homeless dude, the monarchy was close to toppling. You guys smell commies in the air? Germany wasn't making much progress on the Western Front against the combined forces of Britain and France, though they weren't losing too much ground either. After the expensive battles of Verdun and the Somme, Verdun had cost the Germans 355 thousand casualties, the Somme over 434,000 casualties, and for those who don't math, because I don't math, that's almost 800,000 casualties from those two battles alone. The German high command was like, hold up, we can't keep up this shit. Let's build a shit ton of trenches and go on the defensive, rest up, then we come back. Okay? Good. So, they built the Hindenburg Line. Fun fact, guys. The guy that the Hindenburg line is named after is Paul von Hindenburg. You know what he did? He was the man who appointed old Adolf Chancellor of Germany in 1933. The more you know. While all this was going on, the U.S. was kind of sitting around pretending like the hubbub in Europe didn't involve them. We see nothing, no, no war, what, ah, what, I don't know what you're talking about. Business with some of the at-war nations continued. Britain would stop and turn back American shipping headed for Germany. In fact, shipping to warring countries increased many times over in the first few years of the war. Most of the public was all about neutrality, with some fringe minorities backing one side or the other. Then, in May 1915, a German U-boat sank the Lusitania, a British ship, this killed 128 Americans who were on board, and Woodrow Wilson was pissed. Germany, cut the shit with the subs or we're going to come and whoop at that ass. Yeah, 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 we won't do it no more. So, Germany agreed to stop the unrestricted submarine warfare until, you guessed it, January 1917. So, Germany had a plan. They said to themselves, Cells, let's do that unrestricted war thing on shipping. This will starve the Brits into submission. Then we take the rest of France and boom, win. Of course, there was only one problem with the plan. America. They said they would re-enter the war if the Suds did the damn thing. This is where the Zimmerman telegram comes into play. Arthur Zimmerman was a high-ranking official in the foreign office of the German Empire. He authored the telegram, which stated, quote, we intend to begin on the 1st of February unrestricted submarine warfare. We shall endeavor in spite of this to keep the United States of America neutral. In the event of this not succeeding, we make Mexico a proposal of alliance on the following basis. Make war together, make peace together, generous financial support, and an understanding on our part that Mexico is to reconquer the lost territory in Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. The settlement in detail is left to you. You will inform the president of Mexico of the above most secretly as soon as the outbreak of war with the U.S. is certain and add the suggestion that he should, on his own initiative, invite Japan. Oh, 
I, what the hell are we talking about Japan for? To immediate adherence and at the same time mediate between Japan and ourselves. Please call the president's attention to the fact that the ruthless employment of our submarines now offers a prospect of compelling England in a few months to make peace. Signed, ya boy, Zimmerman. Ugh. This translates into roughly, hey, we're going to stop the submarine things again. You attack America if they come in the war and take the Southwest. The reasoning is that if an alliance with Mexico could occur, the Mexican army could tie down U.S. forces in the Western Hemisphere and delay their deployment to the European theater. Solid plan. Now, this telegram didn't just come out of nowhere. It's not like Germany hit Mexico up on Tinder and was like, let's be friends, yeah? Germany had been involved in Mexican politics for a while now, at times overtly, and other times not so overtly. For instance, the Yipranga incident in 1914 saw the U.S. blockading, unofficially, the Mexican port of Veracruz during the Mexican Civil War and stopping a German ship. That German ship was the Yipranga. Yipranga. Yiprangles. Germany had saboteurs supposedly based in Mexico City that had perpetrated attacks on the U.S. in recent years. For example, the Black Tom incident in New Jersey, where Germany sabotaged a warehouse of munitions that was to be sent to allies in the war. So, the partnership wasn't exactly groundbreaking. What was groundbreaking was Germany calling for Mexico to all-out attack the U.S. in case the U.S. entered the war. How did this telegram fall in the U.S. hands? The short answer was that the telegram went first to the U.S. Embassy in Berlin, then to Copenhagen, then London, then to D.C. Yeah, you heard that right. Germany's telegram to open war on the U.S. was sent to the U.S. Why? Well, that's a little bit more complicated. Direct communication from Germany to the German embassy in Mexico was impossible, as the Brits had cut the Germans' international lines at the outbreak of the war. In desperation, Germany asked the U.S. to let them use their telegraph lines, to which Woody Wilson said, yeah, in an effort to show cooperation and appeasement with Germany. We'll, we'll see how well appeasement works in a, in a few years with Hitler, huh guys? Now, the U.S. had told Germany that it had to send the message in uncoded form. This is crucial and posed a problem because, well, if it went uncoded, the U.S. would not exactly be happy that the message they were forwarding to Mexico was an invitation for war. However, the Germans persuaded somehow the U.S. ambassador to Germany, James Gerard, to send the message coded, to which he agreed. Great job, Jimmy. You had one job. One. Anyway. Germany sent the telegram on the 16th of January, which routed to Denmark, through London, and to the U.S. However, those sneaky Brits copied all traffic that went through their station and decoded it for, you know, intelligence reasons. By the next day, British intelligence had partially decoded the message. Now all they had to do was tell the U.S., but they didn't just yet. They were torn. On the one hand, Obviously tell your allies that their neighbor might do a little stabby-stabby in the backy-backy. On the other hand, the Brits didn't want to, one, let the Germans know that they had broken their code, and two, let the Germans know they were eavesdropping on their traffic. While Germany decided what to do, the rest of the message had been decoded, Germany resumed unrestricted warfare on February 1st, and the U.S. had broken off diplomatic relations with Germany on February 3rd. Way to not shit or get off the pot, you limeys. After some bait and switches, a little misdirection, and a little bit of risk, the Brits finally told the secretary of the U.S. Embassy in Britain, who was like, nah, that's fake. The Brits were like, no, not fake, real. Real? Yeah, real. By the 24th of February, we see as time starts to pick up a little bit here, the telegram reached old Woody Wilson, who was not happy, like at all. Then, Zimmerman publicly announced the authenticity of the telegram, and finally, after three months of back and forth, on April 6, 1917, the U.S. formally declared war on Germany. 
After much bloodshed, the war ended over a year later in November 1918. You know, Veterans Day, which was established after that. It wasn't like, you know, hey, today's Veterans Day, let's end the war. You know, anyway. Mexico, for its part, did not receive the telegram well. They were in the middle of a civil war, and the government feared that if they went to war with the U.S., the anti-government faction would align with the Allies and therefore gain legitimacy. You know, and support, and arms, and money, and probably troops. It would just be a mess. Plus, even without a civil war, if there was no civil war going on and everybody in Mexico was united, the Mexican military was no match for the U.S. military at that time. Sorry, Mexico. Not to mention that other countries had tried to stop a war between Mexico and the U.S. after the Yurpranga incident. If Mexico just decided to say f*** it and go to war anyway, those allies would be a bit pissed that they, you know, spent all that time trying to stop a war between the two just for Mexico to do that, you know, stabby stabby in the backy backy. The leaders of the government faction, mostly military personnel, generals and whatnot, pretty much decided that a war with the U.S. and an alliance with Germany was not really a great deal at that time. So that's it. If you did the whole too long, didn't listen thing, here's a summary. In the middle of World War I, Germany tried to pull some high school betrayal bullshit against the U.S. and got caught, causing the U.S. to enter the war and help beat a country that was probably not too far away from surrendering anyway. <sighs> anyway, thanks for listening to this you know, remix of the first episode. As always, you guys rock. Be safe, stay legendary, and stay feisty. Keep cooking.